Why SG has to be one of the most asked about commanders in my live streams and in comments in my videos. Is he still good in 2022? Should I use him in the early seasons of KVK if I'm new to the game? And should I invest in him if I'm in the late game in Rise of Kingdoms? So stick around in this video for updated guidance. Everything you need to know about Esong, the talents, the pairings, and if you should put sculptures into this commander. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and if you're new to my channel, I've got over 1,600 videos dedicated to teaching you how to crush your enemies in Rise of Kingdoms, so consider subscribing to the channel. Also, a big thank you to the makers of Rise of Kingdoms for sponsoring today's video. If you've attended one of my live streams, then you know, this is the commander that is asked about the most. Should I invest in Esong? And the short answer is, if you're a brand new player, the answer is probably almost certainly going to be, yeah. Invest in Esong. Use Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures on him, spin the wheel, and you invest in him. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So here's what I want to do in this video. And as is the case in all my videos, there's going to be timestamps in the description. So you can jump to whichever part you're most interested in. At the start of this video, I'm going to explain why Esong is still relevant. Whether you're in the early game or in the late game. And who should be investing sculptures in Esong. From there, I'm going to give you talent builds, which largely are only relevant for people in the early game because by the late game especially and even in the early game you're probably using esong as a secondary commander we'll talk about why that's the case and lastly i'll give you your best pairings if you're in the early game or in the late game so let's get started the reason esong is strong is because he does lots of damage and not only does he do lots of damage but when you unlock his expertise skill it fires off in a big circle area of effect, which means you're very likely to hit lots of targets. So this means that Esong is a damage powerhouse with 1,700 damage factor when he's expertise, hitting up to five targets in a circle. However, on his second skill, he also has a 10% chance to grant himself 100 extra rage and give his archers 100% attack for three seconds. Now, this is very, very important. This skill does give benefit even if you're not using archers you get the rage restoration but this archer attack starts to be more and more relevant these days than it used to be and i'll explain why uh, the next skill here is related to only defending cities it's honestly like you'll put him on your garrison if you've got him expertise but you really shouldn't be trying to take city rallies and you shouldn't be investing in commanders for the purpose of taking city rallies and his final skill is increasing all skill damage dealt by 50%. This is a big deal. It's a lot of extra damage being dished out. You want to pair Esong with another commander who does skill damage, but missing from his kit is any defensive capabilities whatsoever. So this is a classic glass cannon commander. Really good at doing a lot of damage, but not good at defending itself or taking damage, which is why people will often focus down an Esong primary if they see it on the field. This particular video is not intended to be a commander investment order video. However, I'll remind you I have one of those later, and a card will be up at the top if you want to go check that out at the end of this one. What I'll say is that Esong, however, should probably be one of the very first commanders, if not the first legendary commander, that you actually consider putting universal legendary commander sculptures into, because he's good in the early game, in fact, he's amazing, and he's solid in the late game. Now, how solid is he in the late game is kind of an interesting question. Because once you reach KVK season four and beyond, okay, that is, by the way, kingdom versus kingdom. If you've never done one of those before, don't you worry, you'll get there. But once you are in KVK four and beyond, that's called the season of conquest, YSG gets a buff. And once you've unlocked this buff, it'll give you 10% archer defense and 3% extra skill damage. This is a nice little buff. However, unlike in the early game with Rise of Kingdoms, where I'm going to give a lot of advising around pairing with almost any commander with Esong in the early game is going to work, once you reach the late game, the power level of commanders will really go up through the roof, and Esong will retain value, but you really need to pair him with another archer commander. Now, great news for you. I have a really good archer pairings I'll give you. And they're commanders you should go work on anyways, so it's all going to be fine. But I'm mentioning all of this because originally Esong was extremely versatile. In the early game and late game, you'd pair him with just about anybody. 
And I've tried that strategy in the end game with Esong, and it's just not as viable anymore as it used to be. He's still really strong, and he's still a commander that I think almost every early game player should go invest in, unless they're making a very conscious decision to do Alexander the Great instead. But I think most people are really eager to get their hands on a high power commander. Esong is that commander, in my opinion, above and beyond Richard I, who will be your other early game option. Of course, if you want to get the most out of your Esong, you've got to have the right talents. Now, that does mean he needs to be the primary commander if you're using these talents. And for a lot of reasons, I feel like you should hide him behind some other commander in the early game and use him as a secondary commander. But in the very beginning of the game, I mean, people just don't have that many commanders. There's only so many things you can work on at once. So if you are using Esong as the primary, I think this is my best build for open field. It goes for Rejuvenate and Clarity, which is extra skill damage, but importantly, there's a little bit of March Speed over here as well. Esong doesn't have any March Speed in his skills, so anywhere you can get it from Talents is absolutely critical, and otherwise, we've gone with a full Archer build. This is a very straightforward and commonly used template for the Archer skill tree in the end game, and if you were using this commander in the early game, this is the route I would go as well. If you were limited on talent points, I'd go to Rejuvenate first, then make my way all the way up to Whistling Arrows. From there, make my way over to Clarity. That's the way I would prioritize deploying these talent points if you're in the early game. Now, I used to advocate for the possibility of like a skill slash feral nature build to generate more rage. And I guess you could do that with Esong. It wouldn't be unreasonable. But I feel like the performance is simply better with the full archer tree, especially because we're talking about open field marches. A lot of these talents require you to have full archers, which of course you will have if you're using him in the open field. But if for some reason you couldn't field full archers, then certainly that would be reason to go with an alternate build that dives into feral nature. But that build I think is so unnecessary, I I'm not even going to show it because I just don't think it's all that important for you to actually go max that thing. What I will instead show is that if you are in the early game, you might be rallying with your Esong. Feels a little crazy, but man, the early game's wild times. If you're using your Esong for a rally, this is the build that I had been using. I do think you could debate going up for the extra skill damage, but I don't know that that's better than these other talent points. Maybe the difference here between the clarity build as shown here and the rally lead build are so minimal you might not notice much of a difference. You could test it out and see what you like more. But for open fielding, I think this build is definitely inferior to the clarity build. The final build I want to show you is for defending your city if you were using Esong. And I don't know that he should be the primary because his talent options are not amazing. Assuming you had two skill damage commanders, like you had Esong and Sun Tzu, and maybe you just have like a bunch of talented archer gear, so you're going to use Esong as the primary or... I don't know, I guess it's reasonable that the Revival gear gives stats to all troop types without getting into the nuance of equipment and city defense. I'll say that if you think your city is getting swarmed, this is the build I would recommend. You got to keep in mind that if you're defending your city, you're going to have all troop types present. So talent points that look weak, they give like half a percent per talent point applied, are actually way better because you have every troop type represented in your city. So I think this is the build you should be using if you think you will be swarmed, and that is for Know Thy Enemy. But really, you should just be popping a peace shield. And by popping a peace shield, they can't zero you. <laughs> and that's the much safer way to go. And if you're not sure what build to even use, and you're taking a rally on your city, that's the sort of situation where you probably ought to just be popping a peace shield. Uh, if you're taking a rally on your city, you really ought to know what you're doing, or not have War Frenzy. So you can use a peace shield as your sort of escape valve if you're in trouble. Just keep in mind, you got to kick people out of your alliance center if you're going to need to bubble your city. This brings us to the best pairings, and I'll give you early game and late game. The, at the very start of the game, when you've just unlocked your Esong, I think your very best option, weirdly enough, if we pull both the legendary and epic quality for archers here, you're looking primarily at, like, Herman, maybe, if you had like a 5511L Sid, that would be pretty legit as well. Those are your best early game pairings. I think Kusunoki would also be excellent. There's a little bit of anti-synergy with Imhotep because 
he kind of doesn't do any skill damage, and Esong is all about boosting skill damage, so you're missing out on some of the value there. And the other epic here, Kira, is just not available to you in the early game anyways. By the time you've got her expertise, I mean, you're going to have better options. Certainly, you'll have the L Cid at your disposal, and the L Cid is probably better, who, by the way... Gives you a little bit of march speed and a lot of march speed if you are in trouble. One tactic that's commonly used is to actually use the El Cid as the primary instead of the E Song. The E Song is a magnet for getting focused down. So, by virtue of using El Cid, you put yourself in a slightly better situation. The reality is that in the early game, all the players that went and bought Minamoto are just looking for archers like your E Song. So, you're, even if you use El Cid as the primary, you're gonna probably get focused. And the big reason I'm advocating for Herman as a great epic combo, the best epic combo in the early game with Esong is because he gives you some march speed. You so desperately need this for open field. You may not realize just how much you need this yet, but you will. And it's strong and his damage factor is great. And he's got some ways to generate rage too. So you can kind of pop off with the Esong rage generation and the Herman Rage generation working in concert. However, once you start to get to like KVK season two and beyond, there's a couple other pairings that I can recommend to you. And weirdly enough, the, we're not looking anymore at Archer Commanders. We're really talking about using Esong as a secondary. So the best combo you can use, I think in KVK season two, is actually going to be an infantry commander. And I'm struggling to find him, so we'll just do it this way. It's Alexander the Great Primary. Weirdly enough, the Alexander the Great primary Esong secondary I have used extensively, and it's super powerful. You're going to use full infantry, and this is why I was saying earlier that it's weird how Esong works with almost any troop type in the early game, but in the late game, that's not going to fly. It won't work. It's just not good enough anymore. So early game combos that you'll often see is like Alexander the Great and Esong. You'll see uh, pairings like Saladin with Esong, and those are solid. You'll even see Richard I and Charles Martel, really tanky infantry commanders, hiding the Esong, and those are all viable. But I think my number one for you is still gonna be Alex Esong. Alex does have skill damage, and even though it's on a passive skill, Esong, fourth skill, boosts all skill damage, regardless of whether or not it's active or passive. So the two end up working really, really well, and the 30% march speed on Alexander the Great actually is super fast as far as infantry go, and compared to other people in the early game, you'll be moving pretty quickly. And although technically, Edward of Woodstock is actually a fine commander to pair with, I wouldn't recommend that you invest in Edward of Woodstock. He is one of the first commanders that I benched, and every time I took him off the bench, I regretted doing so. Edward of Woodstock is just not great in the open field, even though he might he really kind of dominate the rally scene in the early game. Uh, you'll find that he loses a ton of viability once you get to KVK season four and beyond. And he's just not a good investment for the amount of time that you're going to use him. So I think that Edward of Woodstock with Esong is a great early game pair if you have them. But if you don't already have them, basically if you migrated, right? So if you don't already have them, don't invest in a Woodstock to pair with Esong. I think you will be really disappointed. This, of course, brings us to KVK Season 4 and beyond. And once you get to that point, you are looking to pair with Legendary Commanders almost exclusively. And Esong El Cid is not going to cut it. There are really two pairings that I think are super strong for your Esong in KVK Season 4 and beyond. And although he is extremely versatile... And you can pair him with any other archer. Your very best pairings at this moment in time are going to be Boudicca Prime with Esong Secondary or Nebuchadnezzar with Esong Secondary. Nebu's all the way up here. And there is a third really solid option, and that is Ramses with Esong. Now, with that said, Ramses used to be a go-to open field investment for people looking to get another commander to pair with Esong. And the weirdness here is that a part of what makes Ramsey so strong is his defense reduction. But now there are many other commanders that also do defense reductions. And if you didn't know this, active skills on commanders do not stack. So if you have the exact same debuff, they aren't going to stack with each other. Different debuffs will all stack. So for example, Ramsey's does a defense reduction. 
Well, one of the best commanders in the season of Conquest, KVK season uh, four and beyond, is going to be this commander right over here, Alexander Nevsky, who does a defense reduction. And that defense reduction might even be more powerful than the one that Ramses did. So I mention this because you're losing a little bit of utility these days on the Ramses. He's not a bad commander to pair with Esong. In fact, they're going to work pretty well together. But when we talk about the best combos you can make, they are all archers, and I think those two very best combos, number one with Esong is going to be Boudicca Esong, and then I think your number two is going to be Nebu with Esong. I think that there are other things that work fine, like Cyrus Esong I find to be really squishy, but it's probably fine. People will claim that Artemisia with Esong works. I, I haven't really experienced that myself, but I also... Haven't run around with that combo a whole heck of a lot. And in fact, weirdly enough, I bet you you could get away with some really weird stuff if you went with, oh my gosh, Esong primary and then use Honda Tadakatsu secondary. I bet you that could work, weirdly enough. And I think it would do okay. But I don't think it's great. And I don't think you want to be in that spot. And even Mehmed is a commander that is sort of advocated as like weaker Honda. I'll say Mehmed is pretty decent. But the problem is that neither Esong nor Mehmed have March Speed. So you pair them together, and they're just really like a vulnerable glass cannon. Sure, they'll do a lot of damage right up until they get focused, and then they get destroyed. And you can get away from literally no combat. So I don't think I can recommend that as a pairing, even though it's a cool idea. There is one early game pairing that I almost forgot about, and I definitely should have mentioned this, and that is simply going to be Ethel Flood with Esong. This pairing is shockingly good in Canyon, and it lasts for just a very, very long time. I think it's because the support tree on Ethelfled, reducing skill damage taken very substantially, goes a very long way. And it is worth mentioning that Esong is still one of the top dogs in Canyon. He isn't, I would say, the best commander in Canyon. I think these days we have to give that to Constantine, weirdly enough. But he is still one of the very best commanders because his circle AoE in that game mode is just super, super powerful. But I'll just remind you that that game mode should never influence your commander and equipment investment decisions. Not at all, man. That game mode does not matter enough to influence your choices for commander investments. My God. So to summarize, in the early game, Esong is so strong, you can really pair him with almost any commander and do fine, even commanders that are not also typed Archer. However, once you get to KVK Season 4 and beyond, you do need to pair Esong with another Archer, and ideally, that, that pairing is going to have March Speed, it is going to have some form of tankiness, either defense, health, or damage taken, or skill damage taken, or normal attack damage taken reduction, because otherwise, he's just too vulnerable. And I found that I preferred using my Nebu with Honda over using Esong and Nebu together. I removed Esong from my lineup is what I'm trying to say because he's missing March Speed and he has no defensive stats. And in the late game, especially, I feel like I get focused a non-trivial amount as a content creator. Maybe I'm just making that up. But either way, the reports are bad once you do get focused. And if you're not using something that's got a little more tankiness, I know Esong with his museum buff, has 10% defense, but it's it's just not enough. These days, commanders hit really, really hard. So you can invest in Esong, and you'll use him for a very long time. And he is very versatile. And you'll be tempted in the late game to try things like Nevsky with Esong. I did it. It was fine. But I wouldn't say it was so much better than just using an, a dedicated cavalry commander instead, like Double C, or if I'd had Minamoto, like... Those, I think, would have been fine choices. I did that on my restart account. If you're looking for another video, just reviewing all the commanders in the game and which ones are better or worse, all the card momentarily right over here to give you my legendary tier list with every single legendary commander ranked in the game where I go about each of their roles in depth. Also, if you're looking for my commander investment order guide explaining should I invest in Esong now or some other commander? And what should the game plan be for my account? That card will be right up over here in a moment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to make sure you get more videos dedicated to helping you smash your enemies in Rise of Kingdoms. Throw a like on the video to support the channel. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.